Hey guys, this is AJ the CEO coming at you with another video and pretty much based off of all the videos I've done I want to just give you a tour of what we actually have in our media booth. Um, like I told you from when we started we actually already had like a system that was in place but it was SD it wasn't it was pretty much only capable of putting video on the screens and then you know we had some donated computers to where it actually would put um, the lyrics on the screen but that was about it and I would kind of walk you through what I put in place to kind of turn that situation around alright so I'm here in our media booth right now and this is the main the main stack here this is for our amps that power everything um, here in the church for our sound system and here's the mini rack pretty much this and these two did not exist we had donated cameras everywhere we have an old um, Roland M400 soundboard we have three Iki <laughs> projectors um, that are supposed to support 1080p but they don't always do it so we've had to sample those down we had those drop screens and there's another one which I can't get to there's another one right there above me so that everybody in the pulpit can see and that's pretty much it so now the one two three four five six seven monitors <laughs> were some things that I added in. So let's just walk through. The first thing I put in place is our ATEM television studio. This is the old one. The new one is similar to the one that I have at home that I use or the ones that I use with my clients. This allowed us to bring in all of our cameras and then also integrate our presentation software to be displayed on the screen and we had a donated computer and that's pretty much what we were using because really no one knew what we needed in here so this was actually the Dell Experion donated computer two gigabytes of memory Windows uh, 95 and stuff like that that's what they were using and it honestly it just it just couldn't keep up so let's go back to the computer See, I'm jumping all over the place. So this is the computer that I built. And if you look on any of my channels, this pretty much has the same specs that I've been talking about on all my other computers. As you can see, it's a Ryzen 3. And this was actually recently upgraded. This has my old GeForce 750, G GT750. And because that allows us to have multiple displays currently we have three displays one for the the two monitors that are right beside here and then one that goes out to our ATEM our video mixer this is the screen that everybody sees when we're um, doing presentations and stuff like that this gives a representation of what we see and then the other video goes out to projectors after it goes all the way through to our ATEM now also on our ATEM we put all of our cameras in here as well so because originally we used to just come in here and change the source to change between the cameras so we've removed and you can see how we had our inputs here what we did is only use one input but then that input is coming from here so our video mixer mixes all of our video inputs so what are our video inputs we have camera number one which normally is a stationary camera that we have looking at that podium but a lot of times the people here in the media booth will use that as a different shot this is a Sony CX230 and this is what we used originally before we've upgraded so but we still use these cameras because they're good for like secondary shots so that's one that goes HDMI out into the back of the HMI all right, now the second camera, similar to that one, is another Canon, but this, um, I mean, another Sony, but this is a CX 
3.30 because by the time we got this camera, um, they didn't make that other model anymore. So this one, as you can see, is pointing in a different direction, but this one normally is meant to point at this podium. All right? And again, now this one, because it's a longer run, the ATEM television studio only allows four HDMI ins and um, four SDI ins. But this model, in any time, can only handle a total of six inputs, no matter what. Even though it has connections for eight, only six can be used. The newer version of this can handle eight inputs. That's what I have in my personal studio. So if we calculate that out, because we're limited to six inputs. So we have camera, HDMI, computer, HDMI. So that's two. So everything else, we made SDI just because how that setting was. So for this one, we've run HDMI, mini, mini HDMI out. But then at the time, this was the best solution we had. We had the Ori XD700, which takes any HDMI in and converts it out to two SDI outs. And this is what now, if I did this again, I will replace this with the Blackmagic Mini HDMI to SDI, which I've shown you is on my system at home. So anyway, it converts this over to SDI. SDI runs and connects to there. So that's system number one that handles that run. So let me go down from the media booth and I can show you what the other cameras are. All right, I'm down here, and we're under the media booth. So this is camera number one. This is our wide shot. This is a Marshall CV500. This, these were originally the type of cameras you would see behind a um, the backboard. It shoots 1080p, broadcast frame rate, pretty good. And then the next camera that we have, which is the exact same thing that we have on the front right there, is on a Servo City's um, pan tilt arm, robotic arm, which allows us to put any type of camera we want on there. But right now, the Canon we have camera we have on there is a Canon Vixia G20. Those are very high quality cameras, um, prosumer cameras. And at the time, I mean, th those those things give us a great quality. And I'll splice in some of the video of how those cameras look. Um, because, I mean, it gives a great quality and it's a very different comparison in image quality compared to the Sony um, Handycams that I showed you before. Here for our front camera, the same Canon Vixia. If I had a choice, I would love to have replaced those Handycams with the um, Vixias as well, even though they don't make this model anymore. They're actually on the G40s now. Um, I think the G40 is 10. I mean, it's 4K. I'm not sure, but that's pretty much what we have. And that little arm, metal arm right there is just a security cable. If it comes loose, that cable is rated for 700 pounds, so this thing won't fall and hit nobody in the head. And the metal bar up there, we actually had a custom welder make. It's just pretty much a T um, bracket with the holes mounted, um, machined for the top of that robotic arm that will work on a boom as well. So here's the view from the back, and that's the screen that I was telling you about before. Now, what we did is, and I'll post some pictures on how we did it. Pretty much, we have, let me go back here. So there's power, because we didn't have another jack up there. But on that shelf, under that mess of cables up there, is the equivalent. You see it right there on the edge. That's another Ori. Um, XD700. So all the cables from here, power, out of that you have power, HDMI, um, LAN control, which is another reason why we like those cameras because we can remotely control those from up there. All those cables come back here. I convert the LAN to, you can see it, the HDMI, I mean an Ethernet cable right there. Convert from, I use a Balin to go from a stereo connection to um, Ethernet so that way it can handle the long runs. 
So in here, we pretty much got up on here, had a boom lift, and all those cables, we've run all the way up through these tiles, and we ran it all the way back to the media booth, which is right about in here. So I have a power brick and everything in here, which powers this, which leads back into the power distribution upstairs. All right, so there's the hole right there that runs to all the cameras that are under the bottom here. Now some extra SDI cable. We had an extra 100 feet of cable. So I know it's overkill, but that's kind of like what we do for that cable. That's everything coming up. There's my networking cloud key, and I'll talk about that later on how we get Wi-Fi and everything inside of here. So all those cables come up and run all the way down. And I need to tighten up those cables. Come all the way over to here and you'll see the other connections over here so those are our four SDI connections and I was pointing to the wrong one over here these are connections the two HDMI connections for the cameras and the computer all right so this is what the interface looks like that we use for the cameras um, since if I had this to do again I would actually probably use the um, Ada imaging camera, um, PTZ camera, which I'll have a link in the description. That's normally what I use to help um, when I'm doing this for other churches. Because instead of having controls for one camera here and one camera here, they're all controlled with one remote. And I just press a button on there to say camera one, camera two. So all of these cables are ran. Um, the PTZ camera is powered but then it sends power over this ethernet to the actual arm. So I don't need power at there, at the location of where the camera is installed, but the camera needs power. Even though the battery is there, the battery is there just in case we lose, lose power here because I don't want to lose the settings, but I'm not going to run this off of the camera's battery. Also, there are no SD cards in the cameras because that would be a nightmare to try and need to, need to get a 30 foot ladder to change out the SD card on that camera up there or mess with any other stuff here. So that's the reason why we did the video mixer. And let's jump back over here. So in the video mixer, and this is a recent add on because this version actually has a H 2.64 and I always mix that name up um, encoder built in. So it used to have run a, a USB cable all the way to that computer which is our video editing and it was the computer that would store everything but recently we had some issues with the USB so I don't know if it's on the computer side or not so we ended up upgrading to the HyperDeck Shuttle Mini HyperDeck Studio Mini I always mess the name up but anyway this is what we use to record our entire services on regular SD cards and I actually got a deal on these Samsungs. They're 128 gig. Normally have two of those that we just rotate. I actually have the other one. If you watch my um, church post production, that was the SD card I was using to edit the service off of. So as you can see, this is the display that's being shown right now, which is coming from the Marshall. And let's go over to the interface. So because how I set this up, any computer up here of the three can control the video switching, but this is the only place where I have the multi-view showing right now. So if I cut this camera on, and cut this one on, and actually let's just cut on all the cameras so you can see what we see. set up on that one mm -hmm. 
And this is what I like while we have Link. Some of the newer cameras don't support this, but that's why I ended up getting Link powered ones for this one until we move every camera to that PTZ system like I was showing you before, telling you about before. Right. We'll come back to this one. And let me bring up our presentation software. All right, so this is what we see when we have all our systems up, all our cameras up. So we have our um, presentation software here. Right now we use ProPresenter because, like I said before, with all my Worship Extreme tutorials, if I had known about Worship Extreme before we did this, because we did this in 2013, 2014, I would actually do Worship Extreme on here um, instead of ProPresenter. Um, but if we have to upgrade to a newer version, I will move this over to Worship Extreme. But this will be the output of our display um, like I was showing in my other um, videos, this is what will connect to those screens up there. Left camera, static camera, that's the Marshall. And then the back and the front are the, the Canon Vixias G20s. And then here's the other right camera, which is that one. And so here in the interface, we just come in here and we just click between the cameras and the shots that we want. Now, in comparison, this one does not have a DVE engine in it, so I can't do picture-in-picture -picture in this screen, but the lower thirds and everything like that, we can still do here. So, what we normally do is come in here to Media Players, Hyperdex, and in here, I would simply click the Record button, and that's how we would start recording our services. So, we can do all the mixing of everything, whether it be... Um, scripture and all this other stuff embedded like I've shown you before we can do the different shots of everything and I don't know why this camera is so, get our shot right there and I'm probably going to relocate this one because this is like just off of center so I want to reposition this camera at another time but that's how we integrate all this now let me let me bring up a announcement slide. I'll do this one. This is a drone video I did from flying towards the church as a use that as an intro video. But as you can see, this is the output that comes off of that. So I just come in here and say I want a preview is going to be so this is what I'm showing now from the Marshall this is what I'm going to go to next I can hit auto right here or simply press the enter button and then it will transition between those two now this is all being done here in the house and that's what will show up on those screens up here through the projectors now, I had mentioned before that our projectors are rated for 1080p, but they actually can't handle 1080p for some odd reason. Um, I think it's probably because they're old and they can't really meet the spec that they claim that they do. Because when I switch to 1080p on these projectors, two of them work fine, but another one is just like really staticky and the image is really bad. So, to fix that, we have HDMI program out of here this is the one I mixed up this is for the multi view which powers that monitor there so we can see all the camera inputs the other one is a program out this one actually has program out over HDMI and program out over SDI but right now we're using HDMI so what I did is the HDMI comes out to here and this is an HDMI to VGA scaler because the projectors how they had it set up, they only have VGA cables running to it. Again, I have no idea why they did that because those projectors actually have DVI out, SDI, and um, HDMI. But they have uh, VGAs running there the entire time. But I also noticed they actually have Ethernets running there. So I could use a Balin 
I wanted to run some balance up there and actually have DVIs connected there and connect everything this way. That's for a later project. And sorry, I'm jumping around because I completely forgot. This is the Balin that I was talking about. So HDMI in, I mean, excuse me, HDMI, <laughs> Ethernet in. But this is a converter to go from um, 3.5 millimeter to the link one, which I'm forgetting the size. I'll link it on there. But pretty much I run the cable out from here. Up converted to a 3.5 and then this is the backup because we've ran multiple cables in the ceiling so if we ever had any issue so I have a regular studio cable and actually I can do it here this is the smaller size and I up this to 3.5 so I can use because the cable for length for whatever reason they upcharge like crazy so we convert this over to 3.5 regular studio cable and then I have a 100 foot cable that runs all the way there and connects but we also have a backup to where there's another um, cat 6 cable running up there and we just could run the same connection through here and it runs Ethernet all the way so like I said we had backups just in case and all those cables, like I said, come from here down. And this was actually our old SD um, switching solution. We only had four inputs. And it was very slow. It was jarring when it um, changed video feeds. So right now, we run, like I said, the Ori outputs converts HDMI to two SDI cables. So we actually have two SDIs coming all the way from the front from the camera we also have one cat 6 cable this is what sends the power from the remote control arm up to the front we have two additional um, ethernet cables just in case one of them is a backup um, and honestly off the top of my head I can't remember what this one is for because that's for the video that's for the controller. Oh, it was a backup. So it's these are two additional backups. One to replace the Ethernet for power that goes to the remote control arm. And then another backup for this is that um, stereo cable that sends the link, com link command back. So these two are built in to replace either one of these if need be. And recently, this is what we were originally using, but we had an issue with it. Found out it was actually a power was out at the front of the church but we switched over to this so right now it's actually using this studio cable stereo cable excuse me to connect send commands to the camera all that runs over here through a pass through because this room used to be where we had our live streaming computer so all of that runs over here like I said, you can see the video being played right there. We would just hit the record button or hit the command on there. So now it's recording our church service. And then this jumps in to the first iteration of our live streaming PC. This used to be a dedicated um, CD and DVD label printing making machine and stuff like you might have saw the duplicator that was sitting on the desk over there because we don't really use it that much but this is the computer that we use to live stream and I need to do a tutorial on this is the stream deck that I have because a lot of people that we have here in the booth is not really tech savvy and this is kind of intimidating to them so I've in the, in, um, included a stream deck in here so all they really have to do is press these six buttons so we gonna before we start service we go to our pre-service which if you follow any of my videos there's our starting image that we use then we have ATEM which gives us a direct feed of what is going in here coming in through the video mixer and there's a SDI out that I'm actually using and like 
like I have on my other personal computer. That's a, a Blackmagic Decklink mini recorder, SDI and HDMI. That's what we use. The HDMI program output goes here to a converter to VGA that goes to our cameras. The SDI program output goes directly to our streaming PC, and that's what we're seeing here. And the deck link, like I have multiple ones programmed in here. So here's a one that I made for offering. So we see a link when people are watching online. They see the link when we get to offering time. Then we also have Be Right Back. This is for, since we stream to Facebook Live, we can't, um, and even on YouTube, you can't stream content that you don't own. So when we go to this, and I'll go through here, we only have an image. We don't have, like an offering seed. We just have an image, but you can still, we're still getting input from the deck link. So people can still hear what's going on. During a Be Right Back, we only have an image, so you can't hear anything. I can always add some copy, um, no copyright music here, but we just say stream over Zoom Zoom, and we only switch on to this if, like, the praise dancers are dancing to a track or somebody's doing something that relates to music that we don't own. Then we just come back to our regular service, and then when we're ending, we would just hit ending, and it goes through that outro that I showed you in a one of my other videos on um, pro live streaming tips. So it goes to that, and when it's done, it would go over to a different image, but I've been playing around with some other stuff right now. Normally it would go to, thanks for watching, but I'm playing around with um, getting more people to like um subscribe and shop um like <laughs> subscribe and share so i'm still in the works of doing that so let me turn that back on so i don't throw people off now the other button which i'm not going to press right now is just to go live this is what i talk about in media ministry where i have our stuff set up to where anybody can use it but i have it to where um a lot of people are kind of sketchy on wanting to join the media ministry because they think it's super technical. And that's kind of like you might need somebody who's technical, but that doesn't mean everyone needs to be technical. So a lot of the stuff that I've learned from other places and over the years is how to simplify this so that everyone else can use it. And that's the reason why I implemented the Stream Deck. No one has to come in and know how to connect this to your streaming services or whatever like that. From a standpoint of media, like, and I do this on my post church post um, production um, show this every Sunday, I go through setting all this stuff up so when people come in on Sunday, whether I'm here or not, all they have to do is press 1 through 5 and hit go live. They just press, switch it to 1, which starts it right here, do the go live 5 minutes before 10 o'clock where we start our service, and then when service starts... They just have to hit this button. That's all they need to do. And I can, if it's very few people up here, like I told you last Sunday, I was up here running all of this by myself. So I just dragged this over to that screen, and I was able to control the live stream and the cameras because the cameras, even though they're remote controlled, I actually just left them in a static position. I have them pointing to what the main points, which are the podiums, the pulpit, and the choir, and I literally just went through the ATEM. Like I said, I have this set up to where you can control this from any computer here. I would just click whatever. So I had this software opened up on all three computers. So if I had to jump to scripture or something like that, I could do it from any location as well as controlling the audio. So I can come in here, have the scripture up. But while I'm doing that, I would do the downstream keyer like I showed you before with the like with Worship Extreme, like I showed you just like with the deck link, I have this um, set up so that it could do lower thirds. And I did this with templates. So right now you see all the black that's gonna be erased. So the scripture would be up. And that's what it looks like on our inputs. But if I come up here, see this is what it looks like. And I can switch cameras and the background will stay the same no matter what and that way we're able to progress through that so 
all the stuff I'm talking about, this is how we do this on a regular basis here in our church. Um, and what else am I forgetting? All the computers here. This actually used to be my old gaming PC that I donated to the church, and it has a uh, RX 4700 Radeon graphics card, so it's more than capable of doing video editing, and I use DaVinci Resolve here as well too, but again, since I'm the main one that's editing, I do this editing at home, but it is capable of doing the editing here. This is the Ryzen 3 that I built for our dedicated... Um, presentation computer and this is the other one that I built the first iteration of our live streaming PC um, that I show on here so I hope that helps um, just showing you that a lot of stuff and the tips that I have on here showing you how those tips I actually use those on a day-to-day -day basis here in our church so I hope y'all like that and you know if you like this type of content I really appreciate a like and consider subscribing, share this content with other people who are like in media ministry and they need some help. And, you know, and also if you're a subscriber, consider hitting that bell notification. That way you get notified every time I come out with some new videos. I hope this helps. This is a 2019 <laughs> tour of our, the media booth here at my home church. And we'll be coming back to you with some more videos on media ministry and helping y'all out. So, um, also, everything I talked about, I'm going to have in the description below so you can always see the exact stuff that I have um, and how it can be integrated into your church. Because, again, all of the stuff that I mentioned is stuff that was added on top of what we already had. We didn't replace anything. We just added to it to enhance it. So, hope that helps. This is AJ, the CEO, and we will catch you on the next video. Later.